buyer's tips and seller's tips as well, actually, because this applies to both. We're gonna talk about earnest money and we are going to talk about due diligence money, what the difference is, how it works, and how you need to approach that whenever you are buying or whenever you are selling your home. So the first thing you need to know is that if you are a buyer and you are putting an offer, you have to come up with three numbers. One is going to be the purchase price of the home, one is going to be the due diligence amount, and one is going to be the earnest money amount. So first let's talk about due diligence. Due diligence is non-refundable, negotiable, and that is money that is going to go directly to the seller when you are under contract. Meaning when your seller accepts the offer that you presented and you are now under contract to purchase at home. The due diligence money is typically one to 2%. It has changed a lot in this market because a higher due diligence is going to give you a better position for the seller to accept your offer because there is so much competition and such little inventory here in North Carolina. So one thing you need to think about is that the due diligence money pretty much allows you for a time period that is called the due diligence period in which you are going to make inspections on the house and you are going to make sure that there are no major issues. So you are going to pick that due diligence period, the seller has to agree to it, during that due diligence period, uh, you can do all the inspections that you want on the house until that date. Now, when that date ends, that is when the earnest money comes in. Earnest money is also a negotiable amount and it can be refundable. Only if you back out of the contract before the due diligence period is over. The earnest money pretty much shows the seller that you are in good faith and that you have true intentions to actually go in through with the purchase of the house. And that money is going to be kept in escrow. Again, the earnest money is only refundable if you back out of the contract before the due diligence period. That is also a negotiable amount. Now, when the time comes and the due diligence period is over, if you for some reason decide to end the contract and not go through with the purchase, you do not get a refund of the earnest money deposit. So you are out your due diligence and your earnest money deposit. So before you make an offer, make sure that you are truly serious about this house and you don't have any high suspicions that there's something really wrong with the house because you could lose a lot of money. As a buyer, if you end up going through all the process and you want to buy the house, the due diligence amount and the earnest money deposit are credited towards the closing in North Carolina. So that is money that you put up front that is going to be credited to you whenever you finish the purchase. As a seller, it is very important to consider this amount because when you are selling a house and you put it off market, whenever you get an offer and you accept an offer, if the buyer backs out of the contract during the due diligence period, then at least you were not at zero and you were able to make at least some money to compensate for the time that you lost not being able to show the house to other buyers so that you could get other offers. So that money you keep it. The only time when a seller has to return the due diligence money to the buyer is when the seller breaches the contract. That would be the only case. And that's a very complicated process. So that's something you need to keep in mind. What we recommend in this market, case by case situation, make sure you work with your real estate agent. They are going to advise you. Again, it's a very different market because of the high demand right now and the low inventory. So due diligence is a little bit higher than it is normally. Earnest money varies. So make sure you ask these questions. Make sure you understand what everything means. Make sure that you understand and that you know how long your due diligence period is because when you put an offer, if the seller accepts it, you're under contract. And if you are selling and you get an offer and you accept it, you are under contract as well. If you have any other questions about this or anything else related to real estate, I'm here to answer them. Make sure you call me, you send me a message, go to the website, however it's best for you, I'm here for you. These are buyer tips and setter tips this time. Thank you.